Good morning, good morning. Today we're continuing our journey of prayer and praise. Uh, walk through the Psalms with Psalms 19. Um, and we're going to start here today reading verses 1 through 6, which says, The heavens proclaim the glory of God. The skies display his craft craftsmanship. Day after day they continue to speak. Night after night they make him known. They speak without a sound or a word. Their voice is never heard. Yet their message has gone throughout the earth and their words to all the world. God has made a home in the heavens for the sun. It burst forth like a radiant bridegroom after his wedding. It rejoices like a great athlete eager to run the race. The, run, the sun rises at one end of the heavens and follows its course to the other end. Nothing can hide from its heat. So that's verses 1 through 6. And in these verses, we see that God's creation is consistently praising him. All the time, there is praise going on around us. We don't see it. We don't hear it. But it's happening nonstop around us. God's creation is simply doing what it was created to do. It was created to praise its creator. And we're part of that creation. We were created to praise our creator. Um, if you pay attention here, the sun... It, it gets up and it does what it's supposed to do every day. It starts and it goes all the way across. It finishes its course for that day. This is what God's plan is for it. And it just does it every day. And it's, you know, the verses say that it, it does it like an athlete ready to run a race. It gets up eager and ready. The sun doesn't debate with God. It doesn't sit there. I mean, what if the sun decided not to rise today? It decided not to do its job today not to come out at all. And I know we get cloud cover and we don't see the sun, but it is still back there behind the clouds. That's why we get the daylight. So what if the sun decided to stop coming up? It decided it didn't want to do its purpose anymore. It didn't want to praise its creator anymore. And it just sat there and burned out. We would have no daytime. We would have no sun. It would be nighttime, dark all the time because the sun has a purpose. You know, everything around us has a purpose and it operates in its purpose. Everything else God created apart from humans does what it was created to do if we don't mess it up. If humans don't cause it to get messed up, it does what God created it to do. It, it serves its purpose. There's no debating. There's no, the sun's not going to sit there and argue with the, the creator of the universe. Hey, I don't want to rise and shine anymore. I don't want to put heat on the earth. I don't want to. It's going to do what it was called and created to do. As humans, we were created to worship God. It is what we're called to do. It is to be our lifestyle, a lifestyle of worship all the time, praising God for who he is. But yet we want to debate with God. We want to say, like, God, I don't want to do this. Whatever God's called you to, this is your purpose. You know, for me, for a long time, my purpose revolved more and still does revolve around my children. They are my primary, my family, my husband, my children. That's my primary purpose. God has expanded my purpose to other places now. But there was a season when being at home raising my children and taking care of my family and my home was what God had called me to do. And for me, that was a hard season. I'm not going to lie. I wanted to be out and have a career. I love being a mom. I love being at home. But I missed being out more involved in my church, being more involved in my community. But I had to walk out the purpose God had for me in that season in order to prepare for the purpose in this season. So each season, what our purpose is in that season is a preparation for what is coming in the next season. So don't negate or neglect what God's called you to right now because it is a preparation for what is to come. Sorry, that was kind of a tangent there, but... It just really stood out to me. And then our next verses are verses 7 and 8. The instructions of the Lord are perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The commandments of the Lord are right, bringing joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are clear, giving insight for the living. Studying God's word, that's a way of life for a believer. It is through studying his word that we find our souls refreshed and revived. You know, this is what we can feast on is God's word. He wants us to spend time 
in his word. It's not meant, we're not meant to go to church on Sunday and enjoy a, an amazing buffet that is spoon fed to us by our pastors. I mean, you know, in our church, we get challenged every time we step foot in there. But God wants more from us than just walking into the church and letting your pastor spoon feed you. He wants you to feed yourself. He wants us to feed ourselves throughout the week and spend time with him and know his word, hide his commands in our hearts so that we won't sin against him because we know his word. Verses 9 and 10 say, Reverence for the Lord is pure, lasting forever. The laws of the Lord are true. Each one is fair. They are more desirable than gold, even the finest gold. They are sweeter than honey, even honey dripping from the comb. Learning to be in awe of God and who he is and of his word will change your life. Because when we begin to seek God above everything else, our desires begin to line up with his desires. And we begin to realize just what an amazing, satisfying meal we have when we study his word. To put it in, in the terms of, of enjoying and eating something. The more time we spend in God's word, the more time we want to be in God's word. The closer we grow to God, the the sweeter we find everything about God because we come to realize he is a good, good father that loves us and will give us only the best. Um, he wants us to step into and trust him in all things. And then verses 11 through 14 say, they are a warning to your servant, a great reward for those who obey them. How can I know all the sins lurking in my heart? Cleanse me from these hidden faults. Keep your servant from deliberate sins. Don't let them control me. Then I will be free of guilt and innocent of great sins. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you. So here we see David crying out. Yeah, you know, make me aware of what's going on in my heart. Make me aware of my feelings and my thoughts. Show me what's there because what's in there is what's going to come out. So make me aware. Keep me from practicing these hidden sins. Bring me to a place of innocence. Show me how to be deliberate in staying pure and holy and away from the sinful things in my life so that I can be innocent in your eyes. And today we know we're covered by the blood. We're declared innocent positionally. We are declared holy and righteous. So we're covered by the blood. And that covers our sins. But that does not excuse our sins. And all too often we want to excuse our sins by saying, well, I'm covered by grace. So it's okay. No, guys, it's not okay. Yes, grace paid the price for our sins and gives us the possibility, gives us the ability to come into a right relationship with God and have our sins covered by his blood. But God calls us to a lifestyle of holiness. So grace does not let you off the hook of living a life that is set apart for God. It does not allow you to continue to live the way you were and claim to be a Christ follower because my sins are covered by grace. So I can continue over here going to the parties or doing whatever it may be and it's okay, no, because when God comes into your life, he changes you. He changes your desires and your direction begins to change. So you're going to come from here to here um, and set your life apart as a whole, as a life set apart, holy and pleasing unto God. Um, may the words of my heart and the meditation, or the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my God, and my Redeemer. What goes into our heart is what will come out of our mouth. So whatever we're filling our, our souls and our hearts up with, whatever we're feasting on day to day, is what we're going to see coming out of our mouths and flowing over into every area of our life. It's what fills us up. And so what fills you up is what comes out. So what comes out of your mouth each day? What comes out of your mouth whenever you're having a rough day? What comes out of your mouth whenever you know, you're just tired? What comes out of your mouth whenever... You get upset or you get stressed out. Does praise to God come out of your mouth or do you begin to go the way of the world? Um, because what we're putting into our hearts is what will come out of our mouth. What we fill our hearts with, what we meditate on will come out of our mouth. And I'm not talking spooky, ooky meditation. I'm talking being in God's word, spending time with him, 
praying his word to him, reading his word, studying his word, and letting it fill us up and using, letting it be used to teach and train us to walk in the direction of the Lord. We have to guard our heart because what comes into our heart is what comes out of our mouth. It will affect every area of our lives. If we fill our heart up with junk, then junk will come out. All right, we're going to close in prayer. And my authentic women, don't forget, we have Bible study tonight at 630. See you there. Father God, thank you, Lord, that you are God that we can praise. Lord, we can join all of your creation and just praise you through everything that we face each day. The good, the bad, the ugly. No matter what's going on, Lord, you're in control. And because you're in control, we can give you praise and glory and honor. Lord, today I pray that you grow within us a desire. Lord, a desire to know you more to spend time in your word, to shift our focus from the things of this world to the things of your world, Lord, that we come to understand we don't belong here. We belong here in your world, in your kingdom, that we are heirs and we are rulers and we are royalty within your kingdom and we can live out of that position of your kingdom instead of living trapped and defeated in this world because we are not defeated. We are your chosen children. Father, I give you praise and glory and honor today, and I just pray blessing on each person listening. In Jesus' name, amen. Have an amazing day, guys.